I'm going to look at cognitive uh, and effective responses. And uh, the sort of basic uh, premise uh, of our of the talk, and it shouldn't be surprising to to those who work in these in, in these areas, but that that understanding of these socio-technical outcomes can help inform policy. So um, we like to to do our research both to uh, advance science, but um, we also hope to advance uh, policy uh, and a move towards uh, an energy transition. So uh, much of our understanding is often grounded in, in, in sociology or cognitive and behavioral uh, psychology. Uh, we also draw on disciplines like policy and human geography and planning. Um, and much of the focal point on the literature uh, has been really more focused on, on place, and uh, we, uh, Patrick has been uh, quite uh, a large contributor there. Uh, uh, we can't forget uh, Martin, uh, it's the landscape, stupid. Um, and my colleague at uh, University of Rhode Island, David Bidwell, uh, has focused in on fair process, as have uh, a number of uh, other people. So, uh, this presentation and this work draws a lot from the uh, risk perception uh, literature, and, and we're all in, in great debt to, to that literature, um, and, you know, in, and perhaps in particular to, to Paul Slovak. Uh, and here we're differentiating between emotion and effect, and I'm not going to go through the, the nuances of trying to split them out, and, and cognition. Uh, and I really like the way. Uh, Paul Slovak in his 2004 article differentiates these two, the effect way being intuitive, fast, mostly automatic, and not very accessible to conscious awareness, uh, and the cognitive way uh, where we use algorithms and normative rules such as probability calculus, formal logic, and risk assessment. Um, our work here also uh, draws a lot from uh, uh, True Love's work, her paper in, in 2012, uh, where she looked at effective emotional and, and cognitive perceptions to a whole host of uh, technologies, including uh, wind energy, which is our, uh, our focus here. So our, our sort of general model, uh, again, uh, the, the broad frames of, of cognitive uh, and affect, uh, and under under cognitive, we're looking at a number of variables uh, with sort of the basic premise that energy causes climate change, uh, and then uh, sort of again, sort of following on uh, what you uh, heard from uh, Aaron uh, Russell earlier today about turbine fit and meanings. And then we're also looking at, on the AFEX side, different feelings that people have towards uh, their local wind project, uh, as well as annoyance, and these both fold into uh, a model of uh, project attitudes. So this survey, it's a, a, a 2016 survey, a national survey. It, it's led by, was led by Lawrence Berkeley uh, National Lab, funded by DOE. Uh, the survey is online, as is the data set. So I would uh, uh, remark to uh, all of the um, students in, in the, in the MISTRAL uh, program that if you want to do comparative research, you can send a, uh, an email and, and get access to that, to that database. And I do want to call out uh, Ben Hone, who uh, asked a question earlier, who led the project. Uh, as well as uh, my colleague Gundo Hubner, who uh, was an integral part of the project as well. Uh, it led to four uh, publications. They're all open access, um, and you can see they're on social acceptance, a couple on uh, audibility and, and sound annoyance, and then I led one on process fairness. Um, beyond uh, DOE, we also published one uh, on relative uh, electric source preferences. That one's in nature and energy, and there's no way to make it open access. But if you send me an email, I'll be glad to get it to you if you don't have access. And then we're working on this uh, paper on cognitive and effective responses. So 
the, the particulars to sample frame, uh, these are people who live within eight kilometers of a utility scale wind turbine, which we defined as being at least 111 meters to the tip of the blade when the blade is at its apex and having a rated capacity of at least 1.5 uh, megawatts. Uh, these projects in all totaled 50 gigawatts. You can see below, we ended up sampling, uh, drawing samples from 235 uh, of these uh, projects. Uh, the, the sampling was quite in, involved uh, as far as stratification. We stratified by distance, uh, and that's because we wanted to oversample those living very pro, pro, uh, proximate. Uh, we also stratified by project size so that we'd have uh, enough people living near smaller projects and larger projects. Uh, and then we were doing acoustic modeling, and, and that's part of the, the Hack et al. article. Uh, and so we wanted to uh, oversample uh, and do case studies there. This led to a non-balanced sampling regime. Uh, and for most of the data analysis, uh, we've done uh, weighted uh, sampling. I'm going to present some unweighted today and explain why. Uh, we did a pilot test. It was followed by a mail survey and then a mail and internet survey. Ultimately, we had 1,705 uh, valid responses. I'm mostly the data that I'm going to present today is on 1,470 responses that where we had no question non-response for any of our uh, regression models. Uh, you can see of these, a little more than 1,100 moved in prior to construction, 358 moved in subsequent to construction. Uh, we think it's very important uh, to differentiate these two groups of people because they ha may have uh, different attitudes toward uh, the project. Uh, this draws on the uh, seminal literature by uh, Tibu uh, on uh, the notion that people self-sort uh, based on amenities and disamenities in communities. So again, uh, here I'm using unweighted, uh, in part given that, as you can see, the, the 348 is a small subset, and so weights uh, are, are a bit problematic. Uh, but in the regression, we do uh, include the stratification variables and the demographics to control for the unequal probability of selection and differential rates of response. Um, the dependent variable is a five-category var variable going from very negative to very positive. Uh, again, we use linear rather than ordered logit, um, given the, the small sub-n, uh, 348 and five categories, the model just performs uh, much better. So first, I'm going to show you some, some uh, correlations. This is in the full data set, so this is all uh, 1,705. Uh, but you can see there's, there are pretty moderate to strong correlations on both our cognitive uh, and our uh, affect uh, uh, variables, uh, with the largest being a variable that went from thinking the project's industrial to thinking it symbolized clean energy project, whether the community effect was negative or positive, whether you thought the positive the project was unattractive or attractive, the amount of landscape fit. Uh, the AFEC questions were, were, were more uh, one zero variables. Um, and you can see uh, pride was a strong uh, positive uh, correlation with attitude, whereas helpless and angry uh, were negatively correlated and then uh, annoyed by the project sound. Uh, um, was uh, also negatively uh, correlated. Hopeful and fearful um, have very, although significant, have very small uh, uh, correlation coefficients. So, uh, what I'm going to try to do is have you look at different comparisons. So, if we look at the first group to the second group, this is the full sample. Close to the full sample, 1,698 who answered the attitude question versus our subsample of 1,470, where we have question non response. And you can see they're, they're pretty similar, the biggest difference being uh, slightly uh, smaller percent being in the, the neutral or undecided category. 
we can compare weighted to unweighted. And here, let's look at the, the second column to the fourth column. And you can see uh, unweighted, we have a much higher percentage of people who have negative attitudes. Um, and that's in part because we, we're really then looking at a lot of people who are very close to the, to the project. Uh, and then lastly, we can look at the difference in columns five and six between unweighted, between the pre and the post. Again, you see a big difference in percent who are very negative or negative who live there uh, pre-project, which supports our decision to uh, bifurcate the sample. Uh, and indeed here we do, just do looking at the means and you can see that they are statistically significantly different as far as the the mean attitude uh, between pre and post arrivals with post arrivals being having more positive attitudes. So uh, let's look at the regression model first. This is a cognitive only model uh, and I've got the variables here that I'm listing are ones that were both statistically significant and then in brackets is the uh, the effect size, uh, a partial omega squared. Uh, and you can see that uh, the believing that wind would be an effective mitigator of climate change uh, and the, the notion of clean energy project progress had the, the largest size effect uh, uh, on, the, on the model. Uh, the attitude model, you can see the R squared is, is larger uh, as are uh, the effect size measures with uh, pride uh, at 0.19, anger 0.16, you can see uh, helplessness and sound annoyance uh, and, and hopeful. So all, all much stronger uh, effects on the model uh, than, than the, the cognitive when we, when we look at them separately. Lastly, on the right, I'm going to show you the, the full model. Uh, you can see that in, in comparison, the effect variables have a much larger uh, uh, effect size on the uh, on, on attitude. Um, and I think, you know, sort of what's interesting going from the effect only uh, to the to the full model, uh, again, we see that that while these overall effects size effects are, are, are less, uh, pride and anger, uh, helplessness and sound annoyance all have quite a large effect uh, on, on attitude. So the last model I'm gonna show you is just a comparison between the pre uh, and the post. Uh, in the pre, I just showed you the full model and all, all I'm showing you is the full model. Uh, and now here's the, the post full model um, and I think the, the most interesting components are those that are in uh, italics uh, on the bottom, the effect, and the, these are where we see the biggest changes. You can see uh, people who lived there before, uh, anger uh, has a lot more resonance uh, on uh, its effect on attitude, uh, as does helplessness. It goes from 0.07 to 0.02. And sound annoyance, uh, the people who've moved in subsequent uh, that's not a statistically significant determinant uh, of attitude. So uh, both, it's important as we see to, to uh, distinguish between pre and post construction. Uh, the uh, effect uh, responses appear to have greater resonance than the cognitive responses, particularly pride, anger, uh, and hopelessness. And so, well, what does this mean? Um, we can't can't say for for certain, but it would suggest to me at least that uh, as far as the energy transition, that a, a just and fair process in treating people with dignity and respect may go a long way to deal with some of these aspects uh, like uh, anger uh, and, and a feeling of hopelessness. If we treat people fairly uh, and um, I can talk about uh, in Q and A if people have questions about the the process paper as well. Uh, but if we treat people fairly and and with dignity, then we may go a long way to hopefully reduce some of the the relationship between the the 
affect responses and attitudes towards projects. thank you.